Hi, I'm Don Pullum, and my friend Scott Hoppert, Manny Salerio, and I make wine at Sandstone Cellars Winery. Wine always starts here in the vineyard, and it always ends up in the bottle. We're going to have a wine party. We'd like to invite you, so why don't you join us? We've got uh, 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 bird scare devices that are operated by batteries and put out various calls and sounds. Some sounds imitate uh, prey uh, and hawks and those sorts of things. Some sounds uh, are distress calls from certain species of birds and some sounds are just a mechanical sound to interrupt the bird's ability to talk to one another which makes them nervous and as long as the birds are nervous they eat fewer grapes. Uh, but that's never enough, and so we're putting netting on uh, as our final uh, defense against the bird infestation that we tend to have here in the hill country uh, wine growing regions. Another pest we find typically in the hill country, especially in Mason County, are critters. Uh, we have raccoons who do enjoy uh, the grapes, they start tasting uh, when verasion begins and they really start harvesting and dining uh, when the grapes are getting sweeter. So this is a propane cannon. You hook up a propane tank to it and it generates uh, a ball of propane inside here and creates a spark and uh, shoots out a lot, a lo large noise that's uh, about the equivalent of a 45 caliber uh, explosion. We're netting the vineyard so that we can protect these grapes from birds. We've got a lot of birds that uh, really enjoy our fruit. We've got other critters like raccoons that enjoy our fruit. Uh, but if we don't have good fruit, we're not going to have wine for the party. So you can see we've got lots of pretty color happening on these vines, on these grapes. Uh, really nice purpling on these grapes. That was from a primary fruit set. So the vines want to generate seed, so they do a secondary flowering. And these fruit sets are always far behind in maturation from the other fruit. Uh, consequently, this will be underripe. It'll have a lot more acidity, uh, but less flavor. And uh, if you have too many of that in your winemaking, it can cause some green off flavors. Hello, I'm Don Pullum and welcome to Don Pullum's Wine Party. At today's party we're going to feature pairing the weight of wine with the weight of food. Cheers! For the seafood salad we're using rice noodles which only take about three minutes, three and a half minutes to cook. They become translucent and we're going to take them out, give them a shock. Uh, and serve them with our cold seafood salad appetizer. They wanted julienne? Baton. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, I know what a baton is. Yep, yep. Uh, instead of lemongrass, we're gonna use sorrel from my garden. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I love this stuff. Is it easy to grow? Yeah, yeah, it's real easy to grow. How often do you use it? Um, I use it pretty often. Um, well, it's it's um, no no. It's very lemony flavored without the acidity. Uh, the fish stock's boiling. Do you want to throw in? Yeah, why don't you throw that in? We need to do all three in a row. Just breathe in. Yeah. Just like this. You want to? Right, let's let it just come up to a boil again and let's take it out. It should be just fine. This had Thai pepper in it, didn't it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, here's why. Maybe a little harsh with the wine. It might be harsh with the wine because I wanted to. This this is the light dish that's going to pair with the light wine, light bodied wine. And sometimes when you add too many seasonings, especially heat, um, it'll bump the dish up so it's no longer light. It's a little bit heavy. Thank you. So the salmon we're going to do an herb and balsamic glaze, and we'll have a little bit of a balsamic sauce on it. 
and we'll just pop it in the oven and roast it very, very shortly. Uh, the first dish, the seafood salad, we're going to serve as a cold dish, and that's our light body dish. And the second dish, the salmon dish, is a medium body dish, and we're going to serve it at room temperature. And we're also going to use the salmon dish to demonstrate um, that you can serve red wine with a fish dish, and it's, it depends on the kind of fish. You get a salmon that has a lot of oiliness to it. A red wine works nicely if you can find a red wine that doesn't have a lot of tannin. And that's why we selected that fire steed Pinot Noir. And, and we'll see how everybody likes uh, Sauvignon Blanc with a salmon dish versus the Pinot Noir with a, with a dish and see what people's preference are. Yeah, both should work well. Um, the balsamic vinegar we're going to put on it is going to give it a little bit of sweetness. So I'm thinking the red is probably, uh, that Kim Crawford Sauvignon Blanc I think is a bit dry. So the red may be the better pairing, but we'll see. Yeah, let's put it in the freezer and give it a real quick chill. Cool. Oh, good. It's time to bring them out. That's beautiful basil from my garden. Yeah, it is. Now, what other basil is? That's, I think it's called purple basil. Okay. Or maybe not. I think purple basil has purple leaves. Okay, so that's not purple basil. Okay, well, this has this lovely purple flower. You cook with basil flowers? I love them. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the floret. You just pull it off, and, and they come off really easily, and you don't have to chop them. Right, right. Really nice. I always sniff it. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So you can use those flowers. I know, they're really wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, you just pour this over the top, shall I? And they come apart very, very easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to season that with some basil, right? So after I put this on top, season it with the basil. Okay. That's going to be a succulent sauce. We're going to let this marinate longer than what they call for. It'll really infuse the fish. And then we'll take it off. Uh, we're going to cook it whole in the oven. And then we'll slice it after we come it out. Yeah, we take it out of the marinade. And yeah, absolutely. Um, Salt, there, there are certain types of wine that you pair with very salty foods and you look for a sweetness in wine, bubbles in wine can help compensate for really salty foods. So if you, if you go li um, lighter salt, it's actually better for pairing with most wines. Okay. Uh, but there are salty dishes like caviar, caviar and champagne, the perfect combination. So you get a little demi-sec champagne, you get real salty caviar, and it's a match made in heaven. Uh, but for our savory dishes like this, leaving that salt out will help the wine pop a little bit, which is kind of nice. So now we're just going to take the lamb chops and we're going to marinate them in the herbs with a little bit of light olive oil for an hour. And meats uh, have a, a much heavier flavor when you add fat. And we're going to be serving this on uh, uh, garlic mashed potatoes. And the starch in mashed potatoes is extremely heavy uh, component of food. When one says a wine should breathe, um, the intent is to oxygenate the wine uh, for a brief but quick period. And when you allow a younger wine to breathe, um, its complexity opens up and you get more fruit character and you, get, you, you just it can experience the greater depth of the wine and the greater complexity of wine. Frequently when I go 
at, to a restaurant and have dinner and they open the bottle right at the table and we have our dinner. The wine is ready to drink at the end of the meal. Uh, so breathing, uh, especially for young wine, is, is a very important thing to do. Let's have some pure Riesling. Definitely has a mineral character to it. It's like minerals and lemons and limes. The acidity is not real bright on it. Um, it shows up with a sourness after you swallow. And this will be great with a seafood salad. All right, all right. Let's put this back in the fridge and not, not drink it all before they get here because that's a good one. Yeah, that's definitely a go. All right, this is an 09 Sauvignon Blanc. This is our medium bodied white that we'd be serving with a salmon dish. Mmm, floral. Um, it's not gooseberry, but it's really floral. Grapefruit? Yeah, there's a little grapefruit in here. You know that kind of peppery character that grapefruit has? Um, white wines. Um, the reason they don't get there is because you very frequently will pick the, the grapes on the early side of ripening. Uh, so there's less soluble solids, you, you get the fermentation done very quickly, so you move all that away from, remove all that opportunity for soluble solids away from the wine. And you get lighter alcohol wines, except California's sort of changed that with uh, their big early Chardonnays and higher alcohol wines. But this is a lovely medium bodied wine. It's got a good amount of uh, acidity to it. Um, you know, the higher alcohol makes gives it a much lusher mouth. It is very great. Yeah, this one's definitely a go with the salmon. The other issue we'll be discussing about wine uh, tonight is red versus white. When do you serve red? When do you serve white? There are guidelines so whites always go with fish and crustaceans and, and light colored meats and reds go with red meat. And it's not always the case because very frequently you'll uh, prepare the food where it may be appropriate to serve a white or a red with it. Um, sauces have a big impact on this as well. And I think, I think this red is probably going to be a pretty decent red uh, to go with the salmon. Especially since we've got uh, the balsamic glaze. Great, great. Bouquet's got like raspberries in it. Uh, it's more along the red fruit character. Uh, it's very common to see uh, like cherries as part of a, of a Pinot Noir. Um, I catch leather, I'm, I'm getting uh, red fruit flavors. Um, really some interesting complexity to it all right this wine is not released yet uh, we're going to hold this one back uh, for anywhere from six months to a year uh, this wine's made with all fruit grown here in mason county uh, we've got syrah in this wine it's the predominant uh, part of the blend and we've also included Tariga Nacional, uh, grown by a neighbor here in Mason County. Um, the Tariga adds some structure to the soft tannins that we're getting in the Syrah here. And then this is the one where we put some Nebbiolo, Nebbiolo into, and you'll, you will actually catch the violet character showing through the wine. You'll catch uh, some of that tar character, and, and it's just a magnificent combination of grapes. And this is our heavy bodied wine, and we already know it's a, it's a go. Please, you guys come on in. Welcome to the wine party. Hey, how are you? Good, good. Um, I got a spot for you, Victoria, right over here. And we're getting the wine poured. Uh, the first wine we're pouring is a Riesling um, from Germany. And what we're going to be doing tonight is taking a look at pairing body of wine with body of food. 
Um, so we're going to be moving from light wine to medium bodied wines to full bodied wines. And we're going to be pairing those with light body foods and medium body foods and heavy body foods. We want to discuss the, the idea of white wine should be served with fish versus red wine should be served with red meats. And very frequently there are red wines that are properly served with fish and vice versa. So what are we talking about when we talk about the body of wine or the weight of wine? We're actually talking about a textural thing, the way the wine feels in your mouth. Now one of the biggest uh, components of body in a wine is alcohol. So you get a lighter bodied wine, lighter bodied whites with less alcohol that run anywhere from 8 to 11 percent. Uh, you'll have a much lighter bodied wine. Medium alcohol running between 12 and 13 percent. You get a medium bodied wine above 13 percent. You start moving into heavy bodied wines. There's also something about extraction, and that's soluble solids that are extracted from the grapes. And it's the winemaker who has a big impact on the way that happens, the type of winemaking methods and techniques they use, whether they ferment for a longer time and extract more. And those soluble solids will make the wine much, much bigger in your mouth. If you don't want a strong, heavy-bodied wine. You pick the grapes a little bit young, and then you, you uh, ferment very quickly, and you get it away from the skins very quickly, and you have a nice, light-bodied wine. Uh, so we're going to taste through these wines. So on the left, we've got a nice, light-bodied wine. This is a Riesling. So now that we've tasted through the wines and we can recognize some of the components of light-bodied, medium-bodied, and full-bodied wines, we want to pair these with light-bodied dishes, medium-bodied dishes, and a full-bodied dish, and then we're going to mix, uh, mismatch wine with the dishes to see why it really is the way it is. Uh, so let's have some food. <laughs> hey, we're back. Uh, we have our food in front of us now and we're going to start by discussing what food body means. Light bodied foods to heavy body foods. Um, fat plays an important part and starch plays an important part in the heaviness of food. If you lack fat and you lack starch, um, you tend to have a lighter body food. Also, the amount of seasoning and the type of seasoning you use, if you use it in a light-handed way, it'll help for your light-bodied food. Sometimes a dish can be made into a middle-bodied or even a heavy-bodied food, depending on how you manage with the seasons. Uh, so today we've got a wonderful uh, Asian seafood salad, uh, light, lightly herbed, very light fat combination in it, and we've, we're going to taste this lovely Riesling, a light bodied Riesling with that wine. So please, first taste the wine. So you remember the wine. All right, now have a taste of the food. And we'll see how the food changes the wine as well. There's some of that interplaying going on. The mint popped in the dish. Uh, well, I like the minerality of the wine going with the mint. And they, they pair really they pair well together. together. Yeah. They're very well, body-wise, they're a really nice mm -hmm. match. Yes. It's a good balance. No, absolutely. It's very balanced. It's, it's really balanced, and one is not overseeing the other. You yeah. Know, that that wine, it's not a heavy wine. No, it's the weight. Right. The weight is exactly right. Exactly. Yeah, it cleanses your palate. It does. I can really tell it meant. To me, it's a very the summer. Mm -hmm. summer it's a good right. combination. Uh, dressing with the salad or some of that heavier dressing with overpowering the wine. Yeah, I agree. If you if you had like uh, uh, put a dressing that had fats in it, like egg or uh, Thousand Island, yeah, right, Thousand <laughs> Island, <laughs> Thousand Island, it would absolutely overpower the wine, and the wine's character would be diminished. And here we've got this beautiful match of characters. It's it's like a good first date, isn't it? It is, or better. Or better. <laughs> <laughs> so now taste the salmon. The salmon's been roasted with herbs and a balsamic vinegar. So there's a sweetness to the salmon as well. Okay, have another sip of the white. See how they pair now. Well, actually, I saw the block really emphasize the garlic. 
Oh yeah, I'm catching that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what's really interesting for me is that the salmon itself, and maybe the, it's the fat in the salmon, has heightened the intensity of the Sauvignon Blanc. I'm getting a lot more character out of the Sauvignon Blanc with the fish than, than I did when it was on its own. Yeah. All right, now that we've had that, let's have a bite of the salmon, this fish, with our red wine. Yum. That works. Delicious. Did this wine just get bigger? It did. Um, when we were... <laughs> yes, right. As I like this... I thought the same thing, it wild the same out a little bit. It, it did. You're, it, muted, it muted the fat, the fatty character because there's a little bit of tannin. Um, tannin is that element that causes your tongue to pucker. Um, and that puckering and the fat together work, work quite well. But this is light, light tannin, so it works well with the lightness of the fat in the fish. So in your opinion, you can do either way. Yes, absolutely. Um, I particularly like the Sauvignon Blanc, the medium bodied Sauvignon Blanc with the salmon. Uh, my second preference with the salmon is the Pinot Noir, the medium bodied Pinot Noir. All right. Now we're going to move along to the heavier body dish, which is a lamb chop in a balsamic reduction with garlic, mashed potatoes, lots of fat, lots of meat, lots of starch. It's a big meal. So we need a big wine to go with it. Wow. This like changes the whole wine. Mm. It's amazing. The tannin softens. Uh, because the fat content mixed with tannin will soften the tannin in the wine, and the fruit flavor just jumped up when the tannin started to it be makes muted. The wine it does. It does. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's have it with some garlic mashed potatoes and okay. see how the wine goes with that. <laughs> the wine almost tastes a little tobacco-y. Uh -huh. Oh, well, wait, wait, wait. Let's see about that again. All right. No, I'm gonna look for that. Garlic mashed potatoes. Okay. To bring out Yes. 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 Um, obviously, there's a tobacco character, character in the wine. It's muted by itself, but with a right food, it heightens the tobacco character. Uh, you have to have a sensory recall when you're tasting wines. Um, Are you tobacco chewer? <laughs> <laughs> Where are we tasting? Uh, we're tasting the full-bodied red with a salmon. I'm so excited. It brings out characteristics in a fish that are probably don't need to be brought out. Right, right, right. right. That, are, that are not satisfying They're at all. satisfying to most talent. Yeah. I thought it brought a lot of the fish oils out. I agree. Yeah. yeah. Fish oils. I the, the fish. fish. Oil. And you started the dryness. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. yeah. Dry the fish out. The fish oils are really fish, intensified. The fish is mild, though. The I mean, fish, the fish is mild. way mild. Right. It's fabulous. I mean, that's awesome, because who wants a real fishy taste? I mean, it's, ah, okay, it's really okay. Nice. I prefer I taste more of the oils in the fish as well. Right. But whenever you drink after, it overwhelms. Right. Yeah, it does. It overwhelms the dish again. The full bodied wine definitely. It's the salmon still coats my tongue with the butter, but it brings out the, the dryness in the fish also. Yeah. All right, let's do something else. Let's taste more wine. More something <laughs> crazy. Let's taste this heavy bodied sandstone cellar's tin. Now have a bite of the seafood salad with us. Uh, yeah, we're going to go back in the other direction. I'm okay with that. For me, that's a clash. I think so too. It's yeah. For me, not yeah. The tannins. I can't taste the food. No, you can't taste the food. It's just a fight. Um, in the shrimp, and that's that's what I tasted was the shrimp. Oh. All shrimps have a little bit of iodine. It's overwhelming. And the iodine with. Oh, no. Yeah. It's yeah. And the iodine character with um, tannin is a real bad combination, and it completely overpowered this very beautiful dish. And now have a bite of the meat. Which one? The meat, the the lamb. From the beef. Yeah, so we're we're going from okay. a light bodied wine to heavy to a heavy meal. What the the Riesling does is really intensifies that reduction, that balsamic reduction brings the sweetness out. I taste the sweetness in the meat. 
Yeah, and that's yeah. I think that's sort of that balsam reduction, which is going to be. Yeah, I don't hate sweet. it. I love that. It's really nice. Bring Normally, it. a heavier body dish with all this fat would have muted the wine, and the wine would have felt like nothing, watery, yeah. nothing. But that's not the case here. There's good acidity in this wine. And the second thing you look for in pairing fatty dishes with, besides tannin, is good acidity. And actually, the good acidity in this wine pairs quite nicely with this meal. Thank you very much for joining our party. Uh, next time, we're going to be doing a food and wine pairing, specifically looking for the complexity of food as it compares to the complexity of wine. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Cheers.